Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to another tile tutorial. Today we're going to look at using tiled, uh, without tiles actually. Um, so a lot of times your level may not be tile related, or parts of your level may not be nicely tiled. Uh, this could be a very large image or a non-replicating image that it doesn't really make sense. You're not going to reuse it. Why draw it with tiles? Or your level could simply be fully digitally painted, and you've just got separate layers and you want to compose them. Um, fortunately, as of relatively recent anyways, Tiled now has full support for non-Tiled uh, image composition. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. It's actually quite simple, uh, but it's, it's definitely worth covering. So go ahead and create your normal map. And again, you would either use uh, an orthogonal or, or um, an isometric map, probably um, orthogonal in this particular case. We'll just go ahead and create that. Uh, by default, we have this Tiled layer right here. We're not actually going to use Tiled layers. Uh, for this demonstration. Now you could. Um, there's nothing to stop you from using tiles if you wish, uh, but in this case I'm not going to be using them. Um, but they can mix and match so you can have images and tiles mixed together however you wish. Uh, it will respect the order they're created in. So the fact that I'm not demoing it here doesn't mean you can't still have a tiled map mixed with a non-tiled map. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a layer and we call it an object layer and this shall be our background. I'm just going to bring in a large static image background. Now what we need to do is bring in our tiles. And up till now we've been using based on a tile set image. And now what we're going to do is a collection of images. They're not really tiles anymore. Uh, they're, they're just large images we're going to work with. And that's what I'll just go ahead and call this, is images, like so. And then now that we've got this tile set created, we can got to go ahead and add our images to it. And I have a set of three images I'm going to work with here. So one large background. Uh, a character map, uh, character uh, image, and then a cloud for the either the foreground or the very very background is generally how you would use this, especially if you're implementing parallax of some kind of effect. Um, so those are the three images we're going to bring in. And the very first thing you'll notice when you, when it came in here, I don't see anything in my images, but I have scroll bars now. Um, that's because it draws your tiles to their bottom corner. So if we scroll down here, you'll see the first one and then all the rest. So just be sure to scroll down if you need to. But we're going to do is set up the background first. And that is a matter of selecting our background image right here. And then you want to come up here and select this guy or hit the T key. And then just click on your map and done. Um, so we now created a background layer. It's really that simple and, and complete. Now if we want to, uh, we're probably going to want to position it slightly to make sure that its top left corner is our top left corner up here. Uh, so to modify it, switch over here to this guy instead, the Select Objects command or press S, and then just drag it so that it is in the top left corner like so. Now, even though we're not working in tiled here, it's possible you still want to line things up to the grid. And just be aware that you still can. So if you come up here and go to um, View, you can turn Snap the Grid on. So right now it's off, and then if I move it, you see I can move it literally anywhere we want, but we can turn uh, grid snapping back on like so, and now it increments in grid by grid proportions. Um, so that is completely an option for you for placing things, especially if you're lining up with an existing tiled system in the background, but you don't have to. Uh, so now that we've got our background going, let's do something foreground and um, midground, or player level and then uh, foreground level. So it's just object layers again. So add two, we'll call this guy mid-ground, which I'm not actually sure if that's a word or not, but it works for me. And this guy shall be the foreground, which definitely is a word and definitely works for me. Uh, okay, so now we got our mid-ground. We'll go back and grab our middle tile, like so. Pick the T key here. Let's make sure I'm selected again. Yeah, it's still selected. And then just pick where you want to place it like so. Uh, and then finally, we go our foreground and we can add some clouds. And you'll notice that um, the, trans the the ordering here, so uh, furthest back, middle, front, is also determining the draw order. So our foreground is going to draw in front of our mid and background. Uh, so let's bring the cloud over and draw a couple of those. So as you can see, it's being drawn in front of the layer. Now, of course, you can change the order this way by putting it up and down in the stack. Uh, but very, 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 very easy to layer things up. Now, one thing you might want to keep in mind is you have a collision layer. So um, you're doing some 
you know, definition. So let's say we want to define the walkable areas of our background map. It's probably a very good idea to put those in their own layer. Otherwise, you're going to run into selection issues. Uh, whereas if there's, if you've got the collision details and the um, the object itself are on the same layer, generally you'll always keep selecting the object as opposed to the collision you want. So let's go ahead here and say uh, collision. And this could just as easily be, you can probably get by with just a big rectangle. And there. So in your game logic, you can say, okay, well, this is where you can walk, um, etc. So your, your layers can all go together very easily and you can handle uh, just about any kind of a composition you want. So now that you've got your level put in and placed out, you might want to do some manipulation. And there's some controls here that you can um, handle quickly. So let's play with our foreground layer, which is basically our cloud layer. Let me show you a couple things you can do here. First off, here's a cloud. You'll notice when I select it, there's a set of manipulators that appear here. And these are for resizing um, along different axes of orientation. So right here, we'll just scale it out that way. Whereas this will scale it the opposite way, and this will scale it both ways. Now there's a couple of hotkeys available for the scaling as well. Um, if you hit, so if you've got it selected, oh, and coincidentally to select things, make sure that you have uh, the select object tool selected or press S. Um, but with something selected, I can go in the middle of it and just move like so. So drag it around where I can grab it at a corner and go to scale it freely. Now if I hold down the control key however, this will scale only preserving the aspect ratio of your underlying uh, image. So if you just want to make things bigger and smaller uniformly, hold down the control key while doing your scale and you'll see it's like this as opposed to freeform like this. Um, you can also do it with the shift key and the shift key's behavior is actually going to cause it to scale relative to its middle as opposed to growing out or in. So holding down shift causes it to scale about its middle. Uh, holding down control and shift causes it to scale about its middle and maintain the aspect ratio. And then alt causes it to basically uh, move as opposed to scale in either direction. It, it locks, the, uh, locks the size of your object. So control maintains aspect ratio. Shift causes the translation to happen relative to the object center. And alt causes no translation to happen at all. For for positioning basically. Now on top of that, there's finally, there's two other um, positioning keys you should be aware of. You can also get these via the right click, but there's X to flip along the X axis and Y to flip along the Y axis. And you can also uh, see by these corners right here, we can rotate like so. And um, these are also configurable over here if you notice, and you can also control your flip over here, should you wish. So uh, very precise control over how things are positioned. Keep in mind, again, you can turn snapping on and off if you need to, to align things up perfectly. Um, another thing to notice while I'm over here is you can still attach custom properties to um, image tiles like this. Uh, so if you want to add a custom property, You can, easily done, no problem. And that obviously is distinct to that one. So it's the only one that's going to have this custom property. And that's it, that is how easy it is to actually use a non-tiled setup to create your um, tile map. And again, if you wish, so say here's our background layer, we can go ahead and add another layer, a tiled layer. Let's move it from the background. So now in this case, I actually need to get a normal tile set. Uh, download CNC. Da, 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 da. Sure. You can still mix and match in traditional tiles. Like so. So. You're not constrained to using just images if you go this route. You're not constrained to using just tiles if you go the tile route. So you can mix and this match this stuff however you want. A very, very common thing that's gonna happen a lot of times will be uh, parallax cloud support. Clouds generally 
aren't tiles. Uh, or if they are, they're tiles that are huge, multiple sets of tiles, and they're pain to control. So what would be very common is to have your background layer be composed of an object layer full of clouds. And then you work with the rest of it in tiles, and then potentially your foreground layer is again uh, built of objects. And then you do your collision layer as a completely separate beast. Uh, but that's it. That is dealing with non-objects in tiled. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, stay tuned for the uh, isometric, hexometric, uh, hexametric uh, tutorial that'll be coming up soon. And then I think we are done with tiled. Um, see you later. Bye. Hello, I'm back with a quick edit. Uh, there's a couple things I either missed, glossed over, or was unaware of that are important for you to know when working with objects in tiled. So um, this quick uh, errata version I'm adding on, I'm bridging to the original video, um, it's going to cover those things. Now, one of the major things I talked about was having to scroll down here to select your tiles, and that's a very annoying thing for sure. However, and I think it's because my mic is actually sitting in front of this, um, you can control the zoom using this guy down here. So if we wanted to say zoom up to 25%, you can easily see all of the tiles that um, compose your tile set. So that zoom ability is very, very, very useful. So you don't have to pan and zoom around like I did in the earlier in the demonstration. So that one's definitely important for you to realize. Another big one is, in the uh, original video, I did a background, a mid-ground, and a foreground layer to have that uh, depth. And there's a very good chance that you're going to want to structure things that way. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way. But if for some reason you want to do everything on a single layer, you actually can. Now let me show you where the problem comes in. Let's say here I've selected my cloud in paint mode here, and I draw a couple, and you see they're immediately being obscured by um, the foreground layer. That's why we had multiple layers in the other case. Well, if you want to do all of your drawing on a single layer, that is very much an option. Just select your object layer right here, go over to its properties and change its drawing order from top down instead to manual. And now things will be drawn in the order that you drew them on the map. Very useful, very handy feature. Uh, one final thing that I'm going to cover off here is when you're in uh, select mode right here, you notice by default when I click in, we go into move mode. You can see the arrows right here, move and resize, right? Well, if you click again on the inside, that kicks you over into rotate mode. So one click, move and scale, another click, rotate. It's one of those things I got wrong um, in my earlier description. And apparently my description of how the alt key works wasn't very uh, accurate or good. Um, what I mean to say when you press alt is you're basically locking it down. So nothing else, um, none of the selections will, will do anything. See, so you're still gonna move, you're still, so I have alt key reeled down. You see how it's not causing a rotate? And I can't scale or anything. It basically locks you into, uh, into your movement only. Uh, so I'm not sure if I described that right the first time, but when you've got alt held down, basically those, see, it will rotate, alt held down, it only enforces moves. So um, just a quick abridged version, uh, three minutes of extra information for you. I'm gonna edit that in. Sadly, YouTube doesn't allow me to update a video, so it's actually sadly gonna result in me creating a brand new one. But that information was important enough, I figured I would add it. So enjoy, see you later, bye.